You are watching KUTV Prime Time News with Omondi Otieno. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on KUTV Prime Time News. Remember, you can share your thoughts with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, KUTV Kenya, and on Twitter, KUTV underscore Kenya. Now, the 2022 political march is already on despite uh, the referee cautioning ab about the early campaigns. Coalitions integrating and disintegrating as a strategy for a win in the state house. The new players also left, le not left out behind with the canoes resurfacing, resurfacing after 20 years of hiatus. Tonight, we are joined by Karani Ching to help us break down the current political standings and the future projections. Wakili. Yes. Thank you so much for dedicating your time to be with us tonight. Thank you. We introduce ourselves to our viewers to get to know who Karani is. Okay, good, no, good, good evening our viewers. This is Karani Ocheng. I'm delighted to be here with you once again. Thank you. All right. Nice. Now, uh, right into our discussion. Yes. Gideon Moore's grand entry into the race to the State House, which has elicited a lot of reactions from the big political players. Despite being now, uh, he's coming in with the Kanu party, which is the oldest party in the region. Uh, what are chances do you see for him clinching the top seat? Uh, in my opinion, uh, at this moment, I, th I don't think if Gideon Moy has uh, chances to clinch the top seat, but he has an opportunity to, to groom himself right. better so that when he comes in the, the next polls after 2022, he can have a, a fighting chance. But at the moment, in my opinion, he can't clinch the, the top seat. Now, Wakili, talking about uh, Gideon Moy, yes. uh, we can extend our conversation to the One Kenya Alliance, yes. uh, which Gideon Moy was also a co-principal. We also seen uh, Musale Mudavadi, uh, co-principal. He's also declared that he wants to vie for the top seat. Uh, on the other side, uh, the other co-principal, that is uh, Kalonzo Musioka, has not downed his tools yet. Now, what do you see for uh, One Kenya Alliance? Uh, because they have not officially declared who is their official flag bearer of that coalition. What do you see for them? Are they? Uh, what are the chances of now them moving to the end of this race to clinch probably the top seat? Uh, I think uh, that One Kenya Alliance, the sustainability of One Kenya Alliance is questionable. And I don't think if they'll, they'll move together as a pack to the election, because we can see Msaliam Davadi is doing campa his campaigns on his own. Gideon Moy, the other day, he launched his campaign. Kalonzo Msioka, like two months ago, he also launched his campaign. Looking at this thing, essentially, they are not going to, to end up in the ballot as a pack, but as individuals because when you look in the, an individual like Musalia Mdavadi in my opinion I feel like he's being pushed by Senator Malala I don't I, I, I'm quite sure if it weren't for Senator Malala Musalia Mdavadi could have already said Raila Tosha and this I'm saying without fear of contradiction why would you say that yet Musalia Mdavadi when they walking out of uh, NASA yes he was you know he was so firm on it that uh, they want to have a coalition that uh, they will run for the next, you know, they, they, they form the next government. Yes. It wasn't about when you, when, from the inception of all this, it, it wasn't about Malala, it was about him wanting to represent the country. Why would you say that now it's uh, Malala pushing him? I'm saying from the onset, the, from the onset of this whole, whole issue, this whole saga of leaving NASA, you can remember that they left NASA like three, three times. They left the first time, they left the second time, and they left the third time, leaving this should tell you something that maybe it wasn't the intention of these people to leave this coalition. Maybe there's some force. And I feel like Musalia Mdavadi was being pushed by Senator Malala. And this one, the viewers should know that Malala is someone who is ambitious and he can use this opportunity to solidify the base in Kakamega so that he can come back and tell the people that, you see, I'm fighting for our son. I want us to be at the top. So, in my opinion, I feel like Musalia Mdavadi is being pushed. All right. Now, uh, <laughs> despite that, uh, Wakili, yes. uh, when this alliance was coming into play, the One Kenya Alliance, uh, 
Yeah. Uh, we saw these, they, 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 they used to speak in, in one voice yeah. that uh, they are firmly going to form the next government. Yes. In fact, uh, the way they branded themselves as the One Kenya Alliance, from the branding itself, you see it's a, it's a coalition that was coming in to, to unite Kenyans, yes. to have one Kenya as a country. Yeah. Now, what do you think Kenyans have, uh, what do you think are the thoughts of Kenyans when they are seeing uh, one of the core principles moving, wanting to, you know, take the walk alone we are seeing musalem davadi want to walk alone we are seeing uh, on the other side uh, kalonzo musioka want to move alone and on the other side we've also seen uh, the kanu head gideon moy declaring that he's going there in my opinion i will say that maybe their supporters may be disappointed their supporters not kenyans because from the onset onset of this whole issue one kenya alliance was created specifically to bar the hegemony of Raila Molo Dinga in the opposition. Like these people, they, were, they wanted to bar Raila Dinga. They were saying that this guy has been so dominant. So we also want that dominance. Eh? So this thing was not created for the purpose of Kenyans, in my opinion. It was created to clinch some seat. Of course, they said they want to create government, to form the next government. So this is a coalition that was created for seeking power purposefully. But uh, some Kenyans are disappointed, of course, because they had some hopes that maybe probably these are the people who are going to salvage us from this economic wars that our country is probably undergoing. Yeah, sure. Because you see, um, the branding itself, yes. I'm still repeating, the branding, yes. the One Kenya Alliance. Yeah. And we are seeing the, 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 the core principles here are people who have been in the government. Yes. And that's why I think Kenyans had much faith in them. Now, uh, we, we, let's see, from the coming in of uh, Gideon Moy, yes. uh, he's coming independently that he's going for uh, this, you know, seat, yeah. this uh, top seat. Yeah. Now, do you s foresee maybe other coalitions being formed so that uh, maybe a coalition can, ha can have the support of Gideon Moy, another coalition can have the support of, uh, of uh, you know, Musalia Mudavadi here and there, on the other side, Kalonzo Museok, and even Moses Wetangula because he's also a co-principal of NASA, or do you foresee them coming back to reuniting and having the One Kenya Alliance again? Okay, in my opinion, everything is possible in politics and each day provides new dynamics to politics. So we should be contemplating formation of new, new alliances. There will be new realignments, looking at uh, the current alignments. There will be new realignments based on the interest and based on the negotiations that they will have. So I cannot rule out the possibility of formation of new alliances. That said, uh, I cannot also rule the possibility of these people coming back together because everything is possible in politics. They may get a reason to get back together and work ahead to, to the 2022 polls. Now, uh, talking of uh, coalitions reforming, yes. people coming back together. Yes. Uh, we've seen uh, from from that endorsement when Gideon Moy was making a declaration of him going for the top seat, yes. we saw leaders uh, talking good of him, you know, talking good of Kanu as a party. ODM leader Raila Odinga also talked so good of uh, of, of Kanu as a party and uh, even Gideon Moy himself. We saw what uh, the you know the Secretary General in Jubilee was saying, and uh, other leaders as well. So, what do you think? Uh, is it uh, a, a move to try to woo uh, the, the Kanu, you know, principal uh, Gideon Moy or to their sides? I, would, I wouldn't agree more because I, I felt that way that uh, these good talks that they were making, they were just soliciting his support because they want a, a support base. If you are going into that election, you know, the voters... By the time we are, we are getting to 2022 elections, we'll have more than 19 million voters that we have right now. So to get those voters, you need to have different, different op opinion shapers from different regions. So I think that's what they were doing. They were trying to solicit the, the support of Gideon Moy. Right. Yes. Now, watching the 2022 agenda... Yes. We are seeing the candidates who are vying for the top seat, and for, of course, to make the next government. Yes. They are coming with promises.
to save the country, to salvage the situation that we are having right now, yes. to you know, to empower women, to empower the youth, and to make generally lives better for the whole Kenya, the the Kenya, Kenya as a country. Yes. Now, it's nothing new. It's is the song that is being repeated. Maybe the rhythm is changing, but the message is still the same. What do you think uh, in those people who are, you know, the candidates for the top seat? Who do you feel, in your own opinion, that uh, is coming up with a legitimate agenda, something that will change the face of how Kenya is for the better of the common monanchi? Uh, in my opinion, these people, of course, they have they have come with different economic models. We can we can see the bottom up economic model of William Ruto. We can see the pesa mfukuni of uh, Salim Davadi and the rural based economy of Raila Odinga. I'll try to dissect each each economic model. Sure. Looking at uh, bottom up economic model, in my opinion, that economic model cannot work in Kenya, and these are the reasons. Economic model works in formal economies. Formal economies are economies that economic transactions are visible. In Kenya, our economy is predominantly informal. That means most of the economic activities are not visible. Their transactions are not visible. A good example of application of bottom-up economic approach was in Europe during the global recession of 2008. There were four countries that were affected by the global recession. We had Portugal, we had Italy, we had, German, we had Greece, and we had Spain. But out of these four countries, we realized that only, only three countries recovered from the, from the shocks of global recession, but one country did not recover for one simple reason. Greece did not recover from the, from the global recession because its, its economy is predominantly informal. And that's why it lagged behind in even repayment of the loans that were given by European Central Banks in terms of economic, economic stimulus. Another reason, William Ruto has been in Jubilee government. This is the ninth year. He has been the second in command. And we can remember in 2013, he supported the Jubilee agenda that supported the trickle-down economic model. And that they, they, it was premised on... Uh, development of infrastructure with the hope that it will create jobs. Unfortunately, that has not happened. Another thing that makes me rule out bottom-up economic approach, in Kenya we have two classes. In any political scene, not just Kenya, we have the political elite and we have the masses. Ruto belongs to the former group, which is a bourgeoisie class of the society right. that controls the economy. So it will be quite unfortunate that Ruto can be telling the masses that he's a hustler I don't find I don't find him having the legitimacy to say so. But Wakili, yes, Ruto has been going around the deputy president. He's been going around with this agenda yeah, sure. and it's resonating well with Kenyans because uh, you can see uh, from the activities of where Ruto goes, yeah. people, you know, pushing wheelbarrows here and there, yeah, sure, they're sure. seeing us Latosha, Kazi Nikazi. Yeah. It's really resonating well despite him being on the elite political, you know, on the other side, the the former side that you you mentioned. Yeah, sure. It's really resonating well. Why would you rule right. it out not working because he is with the masses already. I'm ruling it out, working out in terms of implementations. If it, it's implemented, it's going to fail. But in terms of resonating with the electoralists, pro, uh, definitely it's going to resonate well because the things, the promises that are being made there are so rosy. There's no person that cannot buy that thing. If, in fact, for people who fancy abstract ideas, they'll readily buy the, the, the bottom-up economic approach. But uh, for people who question beyond that, they can't fancy that thing for some of the reasons that I've mentioned. But of course, it's resonating well with the with the common man inch. Tell us something about the Azimio La Umoja because Raila is also, you know, moving around, uh, popularizing the Azimio La Umoja, trying okay. to bring Kenyans together. What, what do you say about that? Of course, we have we, we have been saying the thing, the, this this issue of uniting Kenyans, and this is not the the first time and probably it won't be the last time if we don't change our mindsets. What we need to do, we need to start implementing some, some things like the T, TJRC report. If we do that, then some of these things we won't be talking about them. Another thing, we should base our politics like the last time I was here, I said that we should base our politics, we should make our politics based on ideologies. Unfortunately, that is not, it's not working. But I would really like to 
to commend our politicians like right now they are engaging on economic models but uh, in my opinion our problem in terms of our economic crisis are not economic models we have a bigger problem we have to do some structural overhaul but uh, unfortunately our politicians think that the problem is economic models of course any economic model maybe may work but the big problem is the structural overhaul. These people may come with economic models like the rural-based economic model of Raila Molodinga, but if the structure is still the same, the system the sti is still entrenched with corruption, I don't think if these economic models are going to help Kenya. Now, Wakili, we are seeing uh, almost every candidate yes. is talking something about the economy. Do you think uh, the problem that Kenya is facing adversely, is it uh, the problem of the economy or uh, what is, uh, you know, some of the challenges that they should really give a priority apart from the economy, that they are almost everyone is talking about the economy, reviving the economy? Of course, the, the most predominant problem that Kenyans are undergoing at the moment is in terms of economy, the living standards are so high because of the COVID pandemic and the corruption scandals that have been there that have have really led to to some that have really led to some problems eh? some economic problems but we, we still have bigger issues like tribalism et ethnic profiling those are big issues that needs to be addressed that's why i said we need to implement reports like the tjrc report so that we may do away with these other problems if we do away with the problem of corruption and ethnicity because they are intertwined these two problems if we can do away with them, I don't think if we'll be talking about economic crises like we are talking about right now. Right. Now, uh, going to the papers, yeah. we saw what was there on the Saturday Nation. You, the, the, there was a column writing about tycoons shaping Uru Kenyatta's 2022 sex, uh, succession. Now, the billionaires that are now mentioned here, the Mount Kenya Foundation, do you think there is much more than the financial support they have for their candidate of choice? Yes, I, I, I may say that there's, there's more to that. And uh, there's a, a certain term that is commonly used, uh, like they are called the deep state. These people, essentially, they, they go out of their way. They don't just provide uh, financial support. They also go an extra mile to recruit grassroots mobilizers. In fact, sometimes they don't engage in election fraud. What they do, they use the resources that they have, and they go talk to the people in the villages, they look at the opinion shapers, and through that they use their influence, their financial influence, to influence them to vote in the candidate that they prefer. So, in my opinion, I think that they, 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 are, they are going to, to influence the forthcoming elections. Now, um, as we end up this discussion, Wakili, yes, yes. Uh, we have seen on this status round you're having new players like uh, Mwangi Wairia coming in. We've also had uh, Jimmy Wanjigi coming in to play. We are seeing Justin Muturi, Mukisa Kitui. Now, what does this insinuate about the Kenyan politics? What do you think about this? Uh, I'm not surprised because it's not the first time that we are, we are having several people coming out that they want to buy as, uh, as presidential candidate. It happened in 2017. It happened in 2013, and it's also happened in those previous years. So this is a normal thing, and it's something that is commendable. It's their political right to vote. But in my opinion, I don't see some of them running to the, to, 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 to the, to the finish line. Some of them may realign with other coalitions that will come up in a few days to come. No, but uh, you, the people who are coming in are, are yes. so committed. We are seeing the dedication that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jim Wanjig is having on this. And uh, Justin Muturi, in as much as he is the, you know, the, the speaker of the National Assembly, yes. but he's also trying to move voters towards his side. Yes. Now, uh, don't you think these people will, can also change, you know, the status quo of uh, new players coming into the game? failing not to run to the finish line. Of course, there's a possibility that some of them, like I said, some will not run to the finish line, but some of them, there's a possibility that they will run to the finish line. That said, it depends with the interest of someone that someone has when going to, to contest. Maybe someone is just trying to consolidate the support base so that he can go and negotiate 
in an alliance that maybe will be formed in some days to come. So he's trying to have supporters so that when he goes to the negotiation table, he can tell them that I have this number of supporters. And besides that, I also have the financial we are with all to support my campaigns. So if you give me this position, I'm sure I'll execute my duties well in terms of campaign. So whatever they are doing, some of them are trying to, to consolidate their support base, but some of them are just vying for the sake of vying. Right. That's so interesting of you. Now, Wakili, uh, as we wind up the discussion yes. on the camera, may you maybe just what the message, on your final remarks, what could be your message to the youth and to the total populace of Kenya as we gearing towards this, uh, you know, Paul's Day? Okay, my first, my first message to Kenyans is that uh, the mass registration has been opened today and uh, I'm urging most of the youths to turn up to register. Those who want to change their voting stations should do so in the earliest time possible. Then I'm also urging my fellow Kenyans that we should uh, detach from politics of ethnicity and uh, embrace idea-based politics. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Wakili, for dedicating your time to be with us. We hope to have you here again and again, uh, you know, to touch on the political topic, okay. to educate Kenyans, you know, to bring us to speed with the political happenings in the country. Okay, thank you, Ken. Right. Now, that has been Ocheng Wakili. We are taking another very short break here on KTV Primetime News. We still have...